doing? How are you doing, my child? Are you ready to go to school soon? You need to get out of bed. You need to start getting ready. I've made your breakfast. Your favorite. Lucky charm cereal. I know. Your mother is a good cook. <laughs> Are you okay? Are you not feeling well? I'm gonna take your temperature, okay? Open your mouth. Ah. Uh, you do have a fever. Are you feeling nauseous? Open your mouth. I don't think it's stress. You probably just have a cold. You want to stay home today? Okay. I'll take care of you. Does your head hurt? Does your stomach hurt? Okay. Why don't you rest for a bit more, okay? I'll come back later with some water. Sleep well, okay? Okay. <laughs> Do you feel any better? You seem a little pale. How's your fever? Hmm. Let me check the thermometer again. Open wide. You still have a fever. It's actually gone up a little bit. Do you need any water? some water for you. Are you thirsty? Is your throat dry? Is it sore? Have you been coughing? No? Okay. Have some water. I hope you feel better, sweetie. You good? Okay. Are you feeling sleepy? Not too bad. Do you want to just talk for a little bit? So I could tell you a story. You love my stories, don't you? I can tell you a story. There once was a mother who lived in a shoe and had so many children she didn't know what to do. Now, you think that you know this story but you don't know how she got that shoe. You don't know who she got it from. But long before she lived in a shoe, she lived in an ordinary house with her children. And she loved to grow roses. These great, big roses. And she was so good. They would grow big and tall, as big and tall as the house, with great big thorns. There used to be a giant that terrorized the land where the lady lived, and she feared for her children. And one day, the giant came. It was the first day that anyone had seen the giant and he stepped on her house, and he stepped on her roses, and he stepped and broke everything down. 
And while the lady and her children were safe, they no longer had a place to live. Two years passed. And in those two years, the giant smashed and smashed. And the lady and her children moved from camp to camp, living under fortresses of leaves and sticks, under rocks, anything they could find. And luckily, that lady had been trained how to fight with a sword from her great uncle, who was the only father figure that she had. And so, one day, she decides she's going to fight the giant. <laughs> she takes her sword, she takes her shield, and she walks and walks down this dirt path that leads through flowers and mountains and forests and desert. It takes her four days to reach the giant's cave. Now this giant was not a very nice giant. As I said, he was terrorizing the land. He would smash farmhouses under his great, big feet. He would steal crops and eat an entire farmer's harvest in one bite. She reached his cave. And she walked in and found him asleep. You do not fight someone without honor. And so she tries to be brave. And she wakes up the giant so they could have a fair fight. And so the giant woke up and he crawled out of his cave, which was too short for him to stand in. And he met the lady outside with her sword drawn. And she told him, you will no longer terrorize this land. And he said, I can do whatever I want. And so she decided that she wanted to fight him. And so the battle began. They circled one another, waiting to see who would go first. And the giant tried to stomp, stomp. And finally, he shrieked in pain, and he lifted his foot, and it was hurting, and the lady was confused. She had not hurt him. She hadn't even swung her sword yet. But he whimpered and whimpered, and eventually crashed to the ground with a great She became worried about the giant, and she went to see what happened. And as the giant whimpered and held his foot, the lady could not help but notice that he wore very large boots. Well, those boots are big enough for me and my children to live in, she thought. There has to be some way this can all work out. And she walks up to him, and he says, get away, get away. And she says, what's wrong? Are you hurt? Is there something wrong with your foot? And he said, I don't know what happened, but my foot has been hurting for two years now. And the lady thought to herself, two years ago was when the giant had smashed her house and her garden. And two years ago was the start the giant's rampage through the countryside. And the lady had a thought. What if 
one of the thorns from her roses, her big, great roses, had gone stuck in his foot. And she asked him to remove his shoe. And at first he didn't trust her. No, no, he said. You're going to try and hurt me. You're trying to get me vulnerable. And she said, no. And if I do, you can curse me to spend the rest of my life in your boots. And he said, fine. And he took off his shoe. And there it was. A great big thorn in his foot. More than one. There were many thorns in his foot. A whole garden's worth. Well, no wonder you've been so angry, the lady said. This has got to hurt. And the giant said, No, no, no. You're going to hurt me. And the lady said, If I do, I'll spend the rest of my life in your boots. And he said, Okay she grabbed onto a thorn and pulled and pulled with all her might and one finally pulled out and the giant said ow 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 you're hurting me she said I know but you'll feel better after and if I hurt you again I'll spend the rest of my life in your boots and thorn by thorn they were all pulled out by the lady and finally the giant felt better. And he said, thank you for not striking me with your sword. And she said, it's fine. And he looked at her, and he thought, you look familiar. And she said, we've met before. And he said, I smashed your house. The gardens, he thought. The roses. I want to tell you, I didn't realize your house was there. I was running and running and then I fell, and suddenly I was stepping on all of your thorns, all of your house. I'm so sorry if I hurt anything of yours. And she said, well, the house was destroyed, and we've been moving from camp to camp. And he thought for a moment, feeling a lot better without the thorns in his foot. And he thought, and he thought, and he looked at his boots, and he said, I have an idea. And he said, Now, you may not have struck me with your sword, but you surely hurt me when you pulled those out. And at first, the lady was unsure of what was going to happen. What if he hurt her? What could happen? But the giant said, Since you hurt me, you can spend the rest of your life in my boots. And the lady said, I know anything but that. And so the giant gave the lady his boots. And they were big enough for her entire family to live comfortably and safely. And the giant and the lady probably became friends, something like that. Never was good at those endings. <laughs> How do you feel, my sweet child? Did that put you to sleep? Do you feel bored now? I've kept you awake for much too long. Have some water and then you rest a bit more, okay? feeling you've been resting for several hours now school is over how are you feeling any better you seem a little cooler let me take 
take your temperature, okay? Open wide. Let's see. It's a little bit down. It's gone down to 99. I brought you some more water. Are you thirsty? Okay. I also brought you some soup. You must be really hungry. You haven't eaten yet. You hungry? I brought you some soup right here. A little spoon. Here. Here you go. Good. Here's another. some water. Oh, don't cough here. Here. Good. Do you want some more soup? Okay. It's really Too hungry? Okay. How's your head? Do you have a headache? Why don't you get some rest, okay? I'll come back later with a nice, cool, moist towel for your forehead, okay? I have some stuff I have to do, a little bit of laundry. Outside. Does it scare you? Are you okay? You're such a brave child. I hope it is not too loud for you. Are you thirsty? More water? Well, even if your mouth isn't dry, fluids help when you're sick. Here you go. Try and drink some. It's really thundering hard out there. Good. Do you want more soup? No? Well, I did bring a nice, cool, damp rag for your forehead to help with the fever and your headache. Does that sound nice? Okay. It's getting late now. If you can, with the thunder, try and rest for the rest of the night, okay? You've been such 